Hi, this is Manos Brilakis and Peter Taiti from the Minneapolis Heart Institute presenting case 108 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of a dual lumen microcatheter for wiring into a CTO with a bifurcation of the distal cap. The patient was an elderly man who presented with non stable elevation of myocardial infarction. He had previous coronary bypass craft surgery and he had previous angiogram four years ago that demonstrated an occlusion of the proximal LAD with a tapered proximal cap. There was some disease in the circumflex that um, was successfully stented. There was no significant disease in the right coronary artery. And there was a patent lima that was actually an to the diagonal branch and was filling the LAD in a retrograde fashion. Two years prior to the current presentation, he had diagnostic angiography because of angina, but no PCI was done. One can see there's some septal collaterals filling the LAD now. And also the lima seems to supply the diagonal, but we don't see anymore the retrograde filling into the LAD, suggesting some progressive disease into the LAD. In the current presentation, there was occlusion of the proximal LAD it was before. There was some disease in the circumflex and the obtuse marginal branch. And the right coronary was patent and was giving a good collateral network to the LAD as well as the diagonal branch. The lima was occluded with essentially TIMI 0 to TIMI 1 flow into the diagonal branch. Therefore, the decision was made to proceed with PCI of the LAD as well as the diagonal um, bifurcation, which is uh, complex because there was a bifurcation of the distal cap of the CTO. On the positive side, the proximal cap was tapered. The length was not very long, about 30 millimeters. There was a bifurcation of the distal cap and there were septal collaterals shown in the previous image from the right coronary artery to the LAD in the diagonal. Given the bifurcation of the distal cap, the plan was to start with undergrade wire escalation. If that didn't work, to try retrograde via septal collaterals and leave uh, undergrade dissection reentry as the last option since that carries a potential risk for occluding one of the side branches. Although we have shown recently that one can do re-entry into both branches and achieve good recanalization. Escalation was done with the Caravel Filter XT with the Samurai RC and Nagaya second, but uh, did not uh, progress much. In cases where you have proximal LAD, we always like to have a safety workhorse wire into the circumflex, just in case there's a dissection or some other issue into the ostium of the circumflex or the left main. There is a dual injection with um, the wire trying to be advanced from the LAD. We do see that uh, the LAD is filling via septal, so that is the diagonal, and there's a bifurcation on the distal cap. We were finally able to advance a pilot 200 guide wire into the diagonal branch. And now there's actually some undergrade flow going into both the diagonal as well as the LAD. And then the question is, how do we uh, achieve wiring into the LAD? So we have the situation in which the undergrade wire goes into the side branch. And the question is, how can we advance a wire in the main branch? And there are many different ways to do this. One is to get a dual lumen microcatheter and use the over the wire lumen of the dual lumen microcatheter to advance a second wire into the main branch. Another option is once again use a dual lumen microcatheter, but use it to form a hairpin wire, which essentially is a polymer jacketed, usually a field RFC wire with a three centimeter distal bend. It's advanced uh, knuckled essentially into the side branch. And then when it's withdrawn, it um, unwraps and enters into the main branch. Another option, of course, is to go retrograde and advance a retrograde guide wire through the main branch. In this particular case, we could not advance even the caravel through the proximal cap, so this was removed and there was some predilatation done with a threader balloon. After doing that, we were able to advance a twin pass torque which is uh, the only dual lumen microcatheter available in the United States currently. And through the over-the-wire lumen of the twin pass, we were able to advance a guide wire all the way into the distal LED. After predilatation, we now restore flow into both vessels. And because we did have a significant disease in both the diagonal as well as the LED, we decided to use the DK crash technique or double kiss crash 
a stent was placed into the diagonal branch, then it was crushed with the balloon in the main branch, the side branch, the diagonal, was rewired and performed the first kissing balloon inflation. After doing that, then we, we advanced the second stent into the main branch, the stent was deployed, the side branch was rewired, and then we did a final kiss inflation. Before doing that, uh, we did the pot and we also did pot, which is proximal optimization technique at the very end, to ensure that the proximal part of the stand has been well expanded. That provides a nice result as confirmed by intravascular ultrasound. We did have diffuse disease in the distal vessel, which is not uncommon when a vessel has been occluded for a long period of time. But in those cases, we know that the vessel usually grows within a few months after the canalization, and it is best to limit the stand length because also putting more stand carries additional risk for distal edge dissection and essentially expanding the stands to very long lengths with a higher stenosis rate as well. So a nice final result was achieved. There's T3 flow in both the diagonal as the LAD. As mentioned before, there is some diffuse disease which we elected not to treat at this time. Several lessons from the case. The first one is that a dual lumen microcatheter can be useful if one crosses into the side branch at the distal cap. The dual lumen microcatheter can be used to advance a second guide wire into the main branch without losing access to the side branch at any given time. Sometimes it is possible to just pull the wire back and redirect, but this may lead to loss of crossing. And um, in many people's opinion, including myself, it is best to just maintain the gained ground and just use a second guide wire through a twin pass in order to achieve crossing of the main vessel. Second, using the DK crush or double kiss crush, crush is an excellent technique when both branches are important. And um, this um, has been shown to have good results both in non-left main as well as left main bifurcations. It can be tricky sometimes in terms of rewiring and doing the kissing inflations, but once again it does provide the good results and sometimes without any pain there is not much gain either. And finally, in CTOs, when there is diffuse disease in the distal vessel, it is often better to not use very long lengths of stand, but instead send short, short segments and give time to the distal vessel, which is most likely going to grow once perfusion is achieved. Thank you.